this project was pretty challenging for a couple of reasons. The first is that I decided that I was only going to use a blowtorch to fuse this piece. It's something I haven't done before really with any piece, especially one this small. I, I use blowtorches for my shellac burns, but that's it. And it's because blowtorches, they, they intimidate me. Um, you know, working with this flame that's just gushing out the end of a propane torch, it's just, I'm just so scared I'm going to do something wrong and melt my camera or who knows what. So I gravitate towards my heat gun for that reason, because I'm a lot more familiar with using it and it feels safer because it doesn't have an open flame. But I, I want to get more familiar with the blowtorch. And so I decided for this piece, I was just going to use that to fuse. Uh, the second reason this was such a challenge was because um, I'm trying to kind of put my own twist on an artist and his techniques that I really admire. He's an Instagram artist that I follow. His name is Aiden Cringen, and I, I'm pretty sure I totally butchered that, so I apologize in advance. But he is a portrait artist that works in oils, and his faces and figures are, he adds um, kind of like a broken glass or a stained glass effect to a lot of his pieces, and they're just beautiful. And I've linked his Instagram and his website in the description so you guys can check him out because he's he's so he's so talented and he's you know he works in oils I'm doing encaustic and so obviously mine's gonna be a little bit different uh, I have a lot of layers that I'm gonna be working with and doing kind of my own techniques to, to almost kind of replicate I guess his his stained glass look to his paintings so i am not very good at drawing so as you can see i'm using a stamp for a face instead of actually drawing a face so i'm cheating a little bit but that's okay um, and what i'm doing is i'm doing layers of color through the wax so the first layer i i did colors uh you know the greens and the teals and the purples and those are beautiful colors together but it just when I added the face, for some reason, those colors just didn't seem like they would work. Um, so I sw I'm switching it up. I'm doing more oranges and reds and purples and yellows. I think it might be because the other ones all seem so dark when you kind of blend them together. And I wanted a mix of kind of the light to the dark. And this saran wrap, adding the ink this way, it's not only really fun, but it, it, in and of itself, it gives kind of a stained glass effect because you get the, the crinkles of the plastic wrap really come through with the ink. And it just adds a really cool effect. Now I wait till the ink is completely dry and then I add another layer of wax, but because because of the heat of the wax and the, the coarseness of the bristles, I'm really careful to kind of roll the wax on instead of brushing it on because I don't want to mess up either my stamped image or the way the colors are, are laying out on the surface. Now, using the torch at this point, I was actually really scared that I was going to mess up my face and the colors, but I was pleasantly surprised that the intensity of the flame didn't, didn't hurt it at all. It didn't even really come close because a lot of times when I use my heat gun, um, it can be a little bit slower than the blowtorch. And so the temptation always is, is to kind of stay in one spot for too long and then the image can start to move or the colors start to blend too much. And that's what I, I hate when I do that. <laughs> it's, it's something that I, I've gotten better at with the heat gun. I don't really struggle too much with it anymore, but it still has a tendency to happen a little bit sometimes, but it didn't happen at all 
with the blowtorch. And I was so sure that it would because, you know, the, the flame can be can be really intense and it can go very deep. But but it didn't. I, you know, I'm moving it very quickly over the surface, but the, it works quickly, too. So I'm, I got a smooth surface, very well fused and without any damage to the underlying image. It was awesome. Now I'm trying to just highlight the face just a little bit and make sure that I'm bringing color through through the face and out towards the rest of the painting. Because I didn't want to have just like a blank white area where the face is and then lots of color in everywhere else. I wanted to make sure that it was it was blended throughout. And the yellow was a perfect way to do that because it's it's a light color. It's not covering up the image of the face at all. But it's blending really well in with the with the reds and the purples and then the oranges and I was really pleased with how I was able to kind of blend those colors outward from the face. And these India inks are great. I have uh, PH Martin's Bombay India inks, and they come in sets that have a lot of different colors that are, a lot of them are very similar to each other, but just in slightly different shades, like a darker shade or, uh, like I have two or three yellows that are, that are pretty close, but one's very bright and light, and then the, it, they gradually get darker until you get into the orange. And so it's nice to have so many different different colors because then you can blend them really well together. And again, I, I let the ink dry completely on the surface before I add any wax. And I'm getting a little more used to using the blowtorch now. I'm able to go over the surface two, even three times sometimes, and really get a smooth fuse without damaging the images or the colors. And I'm starting to see why so many encaustic artists work exclusively with blowtorches, because it's working a lot better than I honestly than I thought it would. Now this is an, a very old calligraphy pen that has been almost ruined essentially. It's really not good for anything except what I'm doing right now which is kind of just drawing into the surface of the wax. But going over the stamped image and, and bringing out all the details so that it really stands out on the very top layer of my painting is definitely the right decision. It gives it a, a organic feel so it feels more hand-drawn rather than stamped which is nice and the black it's really just pops. This pen is an India ink pen, and it's not meant for drawing on wax, and it actually stopped working here in a little bit. Um, so I have to go back to using my calligraphy pen. I, I tried to do this because it, it was doing thinner lines, which is kind of what I was wanting, but yeah, it, it just stopped working, so I wasn't a good idea really to use it. But I'm using the colors underneath as a guide to kind of where I want to put my broken glass pieces.
and I'm going to be honest with you guys, at this point, I, I really didn't know what I was doing. I, I'm just kind of winging it. But um, I, I started to add these longer lines, you know, again, kind of inspired by Aiden and, and looking at his pieces and doing these longer lines and making sure that they were straight was the game changer. At this point, um, it kind of went from just this bizarre collection of, of weirdo lines to actually looking like it could be broken glass spreading outwards from the face. Once I was finished adding the lines, I wanted to add a little bit more color to some of the broken pieces. And then I added some, I started adding some color into some of the larger ones that were not really closed off. And so when I did that, I decided to kind of let the color spill out a little bit and then use that as a way to blend the colors back into the face so that there's a little bit more color on the surface. You can see how I'm kind of doing that spillover with the yellow. But overall, I, I, I feel like this piece was was it was really fun and i think it's a proper homage to one of my favorite artists um even though i'm not good at drawing faces myself or even really know what i'm doing it was really fun trying to kind of put my own twist on on his techniques and style um i'd love to hear your guys's thoughts on artists that inspire you and and how you kind of if you ever try to kind of emulate or put your own twist on, on your favorite artist's work. It's definitely a, uh, a way to practice and to, to find new ways of working and expanding your art practice. Thanks for watching, you guys. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.